Hello, hello. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. It is 11-11 <laughs> in sunny Southern California today, local time. Um, and it's actually quite cloudy today, which I personally love because it's always sunny here, which I will never complain about, especially growing up in uh, Eastern Canada, not really Eastern, Eastern Central, whatever, Toronto area, the real winterland. Anyway, today we are going to get back into the McDougal Program's Maximum Weight Loss Program. This book by John and Mary McDougal. Mary McDougal is his wife. There's John McDougal, the young John McDougal. He does look better as he aged. That is so true, especially for men. Okay, so today I want to talk about the rules. So he has a quote unquote simple set of rules, which we will absolutely get into. And these are rules that are very helpful to know exactly what we should be eating and what we should avoid if we are on any kind of a weight loss journey or especially a maximum weight loss journey. Like that word, in his book is very important because this is not just about like a casual weight loss journey. This is to maximally lose <laughs> weight. But, um, you know, I like that he starts off the book basically saying that if we are overweight, if we've had a lifetime issue of dropping the pounds and like we've tried all the things and we just can't seem to get it right or we go on a diet, we have a little success and then we get off of it and we gain it all back and then some, he explains all of that kind of psychology at a very high level. But ultimately he says with such grace that it is not our fault. It is not your fault. And he has this amazing story in this book and on his website, drmcdougall.com. So one day he was, uh, he used to tour all around the United States and around the world and give talks. Um, and one day he was in the green room with Carl Lewis, like <laughs> the gold medal, gold medal winner. And he and Carl Lewis started chatting it up. And uh, Lewis was telling McDougal that he had a hard time kind of like keeping off these last 10 pounds. <laughs> Even a world-class Olympian athlete is having problems keeping his weight down. Like what? And that's why it's so critical to understand food. Um, so John McDougal's point is that even a world-class friggin' athlete is going to have problems getting down to um, a range that he is comfortable with. And so if a world-class athlete can't do that and maintain it consistently, how are we expected to do that? And the emphasis is placed on real life. You know, this is the environment that we live in. And even today, you know, especially around here, I live in Southern California, there's tons of like healthy options. And many places, if I go out and eat, and I say like, oh, just like, I'll have this dish, but just hold the meat like, or the cheese. Um, they're used to that now. But still, that's still not like the ideal weight loss kind of meal, even though it's just like all veg, it's going to be packed with oil, <laughs> which is 100% fat and yummy. It's going to be loaded with salt It's going to be loaded with who knows what, right? Because these are chefs and they're going to make the food delicious because they want you to come back. But even eating healthy is, it's not difficult, but it can be difficult. And this is really for, especially for people who think that we need to eat animals for protein, we need to drink dairy for our calcium, and, um, you know, we need to load up on the fats, like the olive oils, and like, just load it up because it's heart healthy and all the things. And then we really wonder, like, I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to do. Why am I gaining 10, 15, 20 pounds a year, or whatever it is? Um, and it, the reason why is because we have to understand calorie density, which we'll get into. But we also have to understand like the calorie density of every single food and food types and how we are nourished. Um, but he says that this program, this is not sponsored or anything, by the way, but he says that this program is for anybody who has 
uh, problem working out regularly. It is for people who, um, it is for many women, <laughs> just, okay, many women. <laughs> it is for people who do not like to exercise regularly, chronic dieters, those who have trouble getting motivated and sticking to a diet or exercise program. Um, he, in fact, has said many times he doesn't want to be known as a weight loss doctor, but so many people come to him because when they follow his rules, it's super effective. Um, so that's why he developed this program because so many people were overweight of his patients. So he said that he developed this designed for those who have a single overriding priority to get rid of unattractive excess weight quickly and keep it off permanently. And again, I'm not talking about this for superficial reasons. I want to talk about this for absolutely for health reasons. So they want to look great in the process. They will happily discover that excellent health is a side benefit. Um, his program, he claims on page five, allows you to eat as much food as you want. Now, when he says that, caveat is as much of his prescribed food as we want, not just all the plants, because there are high fat plant foods that a lot of vegans will get into trouble with. So they'll say, I'm 100% whole food, plant-based vegan, and nuts and seeds are super healthy for me. All the experts are telling me that I have to eat that, but they can be very high in fat, not can be, they are high in calorie density. They have a high fat content, healthy fat content. However, when we've got some extra body weight to drop, that is potentially going to be a stickler for us. And it is amazing when we just hit pause on the nuts and seeds category, um, that might be the thing that your body says, okay, I no longer have that extra fat coming in. Now I can start releasing some of the fat. So metabolically, it's just amazing how stopping one thing might help you drop some weight if you need to. So he says that his weight loss program is safe and healthy. This is what I love about it. There's plenty of weight loss programs, especially, especially like keto. You know, how many times have you heard my friend or my sister, blah, 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 lost all this weight on keto. But um, I think that they should check their cholesterol levels. <laughs> anyway, so this one is safe and healthy. It can be followed for the rest of your life. Um, if you are on medication or seriously ill, though, you have to consult your healthcare practitioner. If you go all in on these rules and it's very different from how you eat today, then you absolutely have to work with your doctor because prescription medication is very powerful. But if you stick to these rules, then your dosage will have to be adjusted more than likely. You just got to work with a professional. This stuff is fast acting. Okay. So on page six, he says, um, he's got a regular program. This is the maximum weight loss version. So there's certain tweaks that he's asking us to do. Okay. And then, yeah, Carl Lewis. So on page six and seven, there's like so much goodness about his meeting with Carl Lewis. So they have this chat. Carl Lewis tells him, you know, this is my problem, doc. The doc says, here's my book, this one, <laughs> read it. And so Carl Lewis said that he uh, was starving himself to death to keep that thin racing form. Those are his words, thin racing form. Learned about the McDougal program, learned about all this advice, changed his diet, tweaked it. And he said, and then after that, he won all the gold medals. <laughs> he won all the gold medals. So uh, world record setting for um, the 100 meter relay team and whatever else he won. Anyway, so uh, McDougal then has a follow up interview with him. Carl Lewis has told all of his friends and family members, and many of them have adopted the McDougal way of eating. And then, of course, McDougal's like, Was it the McDougal program that allowed you to become a gold medal winner? And he said, I think it had a lot to do with my performance last year. I'm not saying it made me faster, but it helped me. It helped keep me thinner and lowered my stress level. Before he said he was starving himself to death for that thin racing form. So kept him thinner, 
lowered my stress level. He went from starving himself to death and then lowering that level of stress. Pretty powerful. Um, but McDougal, he just, he has so much compassion and he understands because I think a lot of the times he can come up, come across as being pretty abrasive. <laughs> he just tells it how it is, which I personally love because just like cut to the chase. But I think that that allowance and that grace and that deeper level of understanding as to why so many of us are in this position of like, what the heck is going on? Um, why is there so much obesity? Why is there so many overweight problems? Why are we always struggling with our weight? It's our food environment. Yeah, it is. So he offers all that grace. And now let's just go straight to the rules, shall we? The rules are on page 10. Um, this is at a very high level. We're going to eventually, in the days to come, I'm going to drill down on certain key concepts that I would highly recommend we really get intimate with because the more intimate we get with these specific rules and the more we practice on ourselves, the more effective we're going to be using this program that could potentially stick with you for the rest of your life. So weight loss issues. I mean, for me personally, my weight goes up and down um, around the holidays. They really tend to go up and down, but this year I'm going to keep it a little tighter. <laughs> because I'm going to remember these rules, but a simple set of rules. Number one, the foods you should eat include the following, all whole grains and whole grain cereals, such as brown rice, corn, oatmeal, barley, millet, and wheat berries. There's also things like farro, like whatever is a whole grain, you like it, eat it. Um, squashes, such as acorn, butternut, buttercup, pumpkin, and zucchini. Root vegetables, such as potatoes, sweet potatoes, and yams. Legumes, such as peas, split peas, black-eyed peas, string beans, and such beans as chickpeas, lentils, adzuki, navy, pinto, and black beans. Green and yellow vegetables, such as collard greens, broccoli, kale, mustard greens, cabbage, various types of lettuce, and watercress, celery, cauliflower, carrots, asparagus, and tomato. Fruit, such as apples, bananas, berries, grapefruit, oranges, peaches, and pears. But he says limit to two pieces of fruit or two servings per day, just of the fruit. For most people, simple sugars and salt and spices used sparingly at the table rather than in cooking. So this point is instead of cooking, like if you're making a pasta sauce and you're going to salt it, the sauce itself, he recommends don't salt the sauce. When you're about to eat your pasta, sprinkle salt on the surface of your food. It's going to hit the tongue. It's going to get those salt sensors. You're going to feel and taste that salt. It's going to be delicious. It's going to make your meal very yummy and pleasurable. And that's how we should consume salt. That way we're not intaking too much salt. Okay, here's the no list. <laughs> So that's the yes list. Um, within that yes list, though, there is a critical element of anything that the McDougal program teaches. When I talk about John McDougal to people who've never heard of him, we tend to call him Dr. Potato. So he is known for loving the potato. That's his favorite plant um, for so many reasons, so many good reasons. And uh, ultimately, it's a magic pill. The potato and almost all whole plants that are grown underground have all of the nutrients that we need. Some people will say, well, they don't have all the nutrients in the exact quantities that we need. Well, yeah, but we're not going to only eat like potatoes. We're going to eat other things. But that teaching blew my mind. And I had to repeatedly go back to that. Like, did he actually just say that all plants that grow underground have all of our nutrients? Like, yes, that is exactly what he says. He has said that many times. I think that that needs to be stressed because that just makes food so simplified. And that's just not how the world explains food today. It just seems so complicated, but that makes a lot of sense. Nature has made things easy for us. So that's the yes list. And the critical point is that we need to satiate ourselves. If we're to stick very strictly to these rules, we need to really focus on 
the starches that will keep us full. So I'm thinking more resistant starches. So potatoes, sweet potatoes, uh, yams, beans, lentils, chickpeas, things like that. Things that are um, a little more calorie dense. And those foods are not even calorie dense compared to so many other foods that we could regularly eat. But for instance, um, root vegetables, I mean squashes, let's take squashes. If I were to just eat zucchini all day long as like my main, I'm going to be really hungry. So that's just not going to work. We have to stay full. Okay, on the no list. All red meat, including beef, pork, and lamb, all are rich in fat, cholesterol, and other harmful constituents, all poultry and fish, all dairy products. I won't read you everything. All oil, including olive oil, including extra virgin olive oil. They are a no oil or very limited oil kind of team. All eggs. Eggs are abundant in fat and cholesterol. And then here comes the interesting part, especially for the whole food plant-based people. Nuts, seeds, avocados, olives, and soybean products, including tofu, uh, soy cheese, and soy milk, even soy milk. It's higher on the calorie density scale, and it may not serve us well. All dried fruit and fruit juices. So fruit juices, we're stripping out the fiber. Um no bueno, and all dried fruit. The reason why all dried fruit is because when it's dried out, the water content is stripped out and it increases the calorie density of that food. But you might look into that and, and say, well, it's not that calorie dense compared to so many other options. The thing that this team says is a problem with dried fruit is that you can just go crazy and eat like so many pieces of dried fruit. And then when you do that, you look at your total calories that you just ate, and it's a lot. All flour products, whew, so sad, such as bread, bagels, and pretzels. The less a food is processed, the better it is, it is for weight loss. So the closer it is to nature and how nature grew it, we consume it minus the nuts, seeds, avocados, and olives. <laughs> Minus those foods that are very high in calorie density when it comes to a whole plant, everything else is on the table for us to consume and consume a lot of. So the trick to doing this is making sure that we're having a big starchy food at the center of our plate. So the way that I think of it as, you know, people are always like, well, what's like, where, where do you get your protein? Because you're not, if you're not going to eat meat, then what? I'm getting my protein from all of the plants that I'm eating because there's protein in everything. And instead of thinking, um, I'm just going to have a big salad, that's not going to fill us up. And then we're going to be hangry. It's not going to work. Um, we have to make sure that that starch is there and that's going to fulfill our hunger drive. It's going to satiate us. It's going to give us enough calories. It's going to fulfill us in such a different new way that um, you may be very surprised if you have not tried this. So those are the rules. And then this is probably my favorite part because <clears throat> it basically is giving me a little bit of an out. He says, feasts become special again. Now, I don't know if he would say this today, but basically on page 12 and 13, he says, if you stick to the maximum weight loss program and these rules for the majority of your days, and then when it comes time for the holidays, you can have your big feast and you can indulge, but it's not like you're indulging every single day. So I guess that's the point. Typically, we're indulging three times a day plus snacks. <laughs> and of course, that's going to lead to weight gain for many of us. Ah, even for me, you know, I grew up... Um, almost feeling like too thin all the time. And it was, it felt impossible for me to put on weight. This is when I was like a teenager and I was like stick skinny. Um, I know a nice problem to have, right? Now I have no problems putting on weight and that all changed when I was like 25. Um, so now I really have to pay attention to how I eat, how much I eat, what I eat. But after going through this, it's just like second nature now. I still eat all the things. I still eat bread. If anybody told me don't ever eat bread again, I would just stop listening to them immediately because I'm just not going to do that. But 
I like that he says, you know, there is a place for rich foods when and if there are, when if, and if they are reintroduced to your diet or just the way you live your life. And the place is reserved for festive occasions. So during the holidays, I'm absolutely going to partake during celebrations or really a lot of, a lot of <laughs> cases, but the current diet is simply too rich for our metabolism. When we eat this way every single day, when every single day is a feast and a party, it is really a matter of balance of making our daily eating simple and healthful and reserving our feasting for celebrations once again. Okay. And what I love about him is also, he says he's not making a moral judgment of anyone. So him coming off as like, a little abrasive. Um, he uses the word fat a lot, like calling people fat. Um, and a lot of people are very offended by that, right? <laughs> Rightfully so. But when he says that, he's he's thinking as a medical doctor because he's treated so many people who are really sick and who do have a long journey ahead of them. Um, so he says he's not making a moral judgment of anyone. I am simply stating a scientific and medical fact, a lifestyle of inactivity and a diet rich in fat and low in carbohydrates destroys human health. We have not been designed by evolution to eat such a diet. So those are the rules. And then I'm going to start talking about calorie restriction. I mean, not calorie restri restriction, calorie density. <laughs> We're not restricting calories at all. There's no counting calories. Um, we're just going to talk about specific foods and food products like the mock meats that people often think, oh, these, this is vegan, so therefore this is healthy and this is going to help me lose weight and reach my health goals. Not necessarily, um, but there are nuances to that. But very specific types of food that you may think is healthy that is not serving you well if you are on a weight loss journey. Um, and then also something called a 50-50 plate, which is a very easy way to measure out your food and know exactly how we are able to eat as much as we want. That is true, but there are certain specifics that we have to practice and get very used to. And then it becomes so easy, so easy to maintain your weight once you hit that ideal weight or around there. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. And uh, with that, maybe go eat a potato. <laughs> I'll see you next time.